Good morning, everybody. I believe we're live now. And we're just waiting on Canon. Let's see. Let me double check. All right. I believe their countdown timer here says three hours and four minutes, but I'm pretty sure they messed up. Uh, either they're looking at it, their their browser is looking at it from Eastern Time, which is where Canon is based, or they just programmed it wrong. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't start in three hours. Hopefully it starts in five minutes, three minutes, four minutes. As it, you know, maybe that's just Eastern Time. So it doesn't quite add up either way. So hopefully it's not terribly off. Okay, so really what we're doing today, um, we're gonna be keeping an eye on this virtual press conference, which as far as I know is a replacement for what Canon would have done at NAB, which is canceled uh, because we're right around NAB. I think we should all be in Vegas right now, uh, but that's obviously not happening. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see. Does anybody have any predictions? Anybody want to throw in their their prediction right now? Hopefully, we are in fact getting new lenses. There are some rumors. There's some some uh, changes that are happening. Um, one thing that I do know has already happened. Went live this morning. Um, the Canon Compact zooms have received a massive price reduction. I don't know if that's going to be part of this press conference. Um, but yeah, those are significantly reduced. They used to be right around 23, 24,000, I think. Um, and they got dropped to about 10,000. So that's a huge, huge slash. So the worst earbuds I own. I apologize. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up here. There we go. Sort of a truncated window. I don't know if you guys will be able to see all this. So Canon CNE, Cine Zooms. Oh, why is this so small? Hang on. Sorry, bear with me. I'll just do a half window for you. Okay. Um, I'll pull that up here in a second. Okay, new mirrorless DLS, DSLR announced. C300 Mark III is your guess, Cine Chimp. Jeff Q, yeah, they are really playing catch up with Zeiss and Fuji, both who have a approximately $10,000 Super 35 zoom. So, um, so yeah, here we go. The Oh, I just lost it. Where'd it go? Yeah, so here they are, the 15.5 to 47 and the 30 to 105. They used to be, ah, oh, it doesn't even show it, probably because I don't have it in stock right now. This one I know is in stock. It doesn't show the old price, but I believe it was about 23 or 24,000. Um, well, I wonder if we can, my, uh, my website's chat feature. Michelle's at the office right now. 
can you tell me more about this lens? Let's see if she replies. It's completely anonymous, so anyone that gets these chats at the office or wherever they are working remotely, um, they have no idea who it is. <laughs> no, they're not going to answer. Um, any other predictions? Hello from Georgia. The country or the state? Yeah, there was a it was a massive price drop. Um, it's almost half the price, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, I don't know how much interest there is in a Super 35 Zoom these days. Um, like I've been saying for a long time, I don't think full frame is replacing Super 35, but I also don't know what the demand for Super 35 is moving forward. It's kind of hard to say. So yeah, let me get rid of this chat because they're obviously not responding. Um, but yeah, those are a couple of really, really good lenses. And at that price now, that's uh, that's a bargain. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see Canon come out with a speed booster. Canon will probably never make a speed booster because um, they want you to pay a premium for their fast glass. And it would, it would, Instead of paying, you know, full price for an 85.12 L series, um, people would just buy, you know, the nifty 50, throw the speed booster on, and then you're half the price. I don't think Canon is interested in cannibalizing their sales like that. B&H says 23275 for old price. That's, that's exactly what I expect. Yeah, so the original price. This is less than half. That's pretty incredible. Matt, are you guys selling a speed booster for those lenses? So, CineChimp, you have that backwards. A speed booster would reduce your uh, image circle. An expander would increase your image circle, which is the opposite of a speed booster. Uh, you're losing light when you use a uh, an expander. Canon Cine Zero, 25 to 250, T 2.95 to 3.9 announced. Bob Donnelly, North American camera. Hey, Bob. Um, that's exactly what I was waiting for someone to put out there. Um, I can't say it. Uh, drop me a link if you can, Bob. I'll pull that up and we can go over that. Sorry, focal expander. Yeah, so a, uh, a, an image expander, you could use our current 1.7. It'll work on these compact zooms and they'll cover full frame. That'll that'll do the, the trick just fine. In fact, that is under optical adapters. Do close 1.7. There you go. That will get these Canon Compact zooms up to full frame coverage, no problem. Um, you will lose a stop and a half. Um, it's inevitable. If you want that image, if you want that larger image, you have to give up something. You can't have your the cake and eat it too. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get rid of that for now. I'm still waiting on them. It's four past, and I don't see Canon's uh, virtual press conference here. Oh, here we go. Video has taken hold of so much of our daily lives, from cinema and television to YouTube and streaming. And now I don't know who this is. Canon's seamless lineup. It's important for us that we understand the practical and cultural changes in how our equipment's being used, and that we build a seamless system when it comes to equipment compatibility and workflow compatibility. A system where our camera models pair nicely through our consistent color science that allows for easier workflows. Now more than ever, Canon has built a seamless ecosystem of equipment that suits nearly every video market and application. All right, so they're just going over the whole spiel. From streaming a Sunday service to creating a nature documentary. The equipment we provide satisfies nearly every workflow, creative style, or budget. And one of the 
intangible benefits of working with a system like ours. Max, I will in fact do a comparison showing the difference, camera. the image quality There's difference. A familiarity with the menu system and the layouts that accelerates the learning curve as creative pros grow with our gear. And the lenses. I love our glass and so do many of you. You'll find Canon EF mounts on a variety of cameras, both from Canon as well as other manufacturers. Our lenses withstand the test of time and deliver beautiful images in a variety that suits any creative look. And now, with the new RF lenses and R system, we are breaking new boundaries in both optical performance and design. I'm actually using an EOS Bob, right you got to drop a link for, the footage you're watching. for that announcement because I but can't say it unless someone else says it first. <laughs> is understanding and sharing the human impact of our equipment. We're an imaging company, and images inspire us, educate us, and touch us throughout our lives in such a powerful way. I take pride in seeing the amazing work that you all create with Canon Gear, and I feel so privileged to be part of Okay, so this is all, I just muted it. Um, this is kind of, actually, here, let me just do it here. Incredibly creative work streaming. Oh, can I not mute it? And I've taken the time to pull out nope, some old I can't photos do it and videos in the... of my own and reflect on cherished memories. There we go. And that fills me with joy and hope. So um, they're just going over their, the we are canon, we have all these things, spiel. Um, to answer some of the other questions, is there a speed boost, Life Tree Studios, is there a speed booster for the Canon 18 to 80 that would still mount to EF? Uh, you can't have EF to EF speed booster. You need that gap in between, um, unless you are doing some trickery with the the optical design. But as it is right now, that's why you always see speed boosters. Oh, we have a senior specialist here. Hold on, let's go back to this. ...be able to announce to you the Canon C300 Mark III. I am very There's your C300 Mark III. We fully expected Canon, um, sorry, camera stuff, but so I'm really waiting for the lens stuff. And, and, and to see it, um, Man, I wish this Bob would really the post that link here. Culmination of Eos. And without much further ado, let's get right to the main stuff. Starting off with a brand new 4K Super 35 millimeter dual gain output sensor. All right, it's already on news shooter. This sensor is capable of so let me stops of total dynamic range. Let Next me update some stuff here. Digit processor. And this one uses the Digic D. And I'll get back to this. The same engine that drives the C500 Mark II and allows us to do the following: 4K and UHD as well as 2K and HD up to So C300 Mark III is Super 35. Additionally, if you choose to do the Super 16 millimeter crop, you can do 2K up to 180 frames per second. The two recording formats in the camera are Cinema Raw Light and XFADC. Another feature that can make a lot of people happy, user interchangeable lens mount. Ooh, coming to that I like. User interchangeable Another lens mount on the camera. Is the ability to de-squeeze anamorphic lenses and to be able to monitor the correct... That's angle. cool. That's, well, that's very uncannon. I know they did that in their other ones, like the C500 Mark II. Uh, but I'm glad they're implementing that on their lower end. Interesting feature that we're seeing gain a lot of ground because of its inclusion in the C500 Mark II. This camera has electronic image stabilization, which works in XF ADC. Something people have been asking for in the C300 for a long time. It's finally here. You can install your own LUT. The C300 Mark III comes with a 12G SDI output, and this is going to be able to give you 4K with one cable. I've only just started to scratch the surface of the features of this camera. But for now, why don't we take a tour of the body? Now, I know what you're thinking. When you saw this the first time, you're probably like, Paul, what are you doing? That's a C500 Mark II. Well, actually, the camera is the exact same body as the C500 Mark II. That's right, right down to the 3.9 pounds weight and the balance of it. So this is a really interesting thing. That means that all of your C500 Mark II accessories are going to work on this camera. It kind of ushers in a new era of interchangeability on set. With the EU-V1 or the EU-V2, the camera becomes prime okay. broadcast experience. Give this a, a new tag. Two with the Genlock and with the 12G output, you can hook it up to a multi-dime silverback system and you can take a fiber connection from that directly to any broadcast studio that you need to go.
What can you shoot with this gun? All right, so first off, we've established that the camera can record the cinema raw light to the CF Express cards. And again, this is in any crop mode. So Super 35 crop mode, you're going to be getting 4K cinema raw light up to 120 frames per second. If I go into the Super 16 millimeter crop mode, then I can shoot 2K cinema raw light up to 180 frames a second. In 4K, the cinema raw light comes at a daily usage of one gigabit per second. While in the 2K mode, you're looking at 250 megabits per second. So quite a savings in data. An important note about cinema raw light. Is um, Josh is Kirkwood, your question about the EFPL, yes. Um, Actually, let me go back here real quick. I'm going to bring this guy. He's talking about the camera. I'm sure you guys are interested, but it's all going to be there. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not super interested in the camera stuff. So let me bring back my site here. I'll make this a little bigger. Um, so <laughs> there it is, the 25 to 250. That's what um, I've been waiting for them to say, but it's actually been put out on other sites already. So I'm not going to bother waiting um that's the lens that they're announcing um but the other lens let's go back to the compact zooms um so josh you're asking about interchangeable mounts let's say on the 30 to 105 you've got air epl canon ef and then you have the multi-mount the multi-mount is what we install it's a modification that we do at our shop um and it allows you to switch really quickly, really easily between EF and PL. Uh, it's it's a phenomenal modification. I don't. I think a majority of those compact zooms that we've sold have come with that kit uh, because it's a no-brainer. So I don't know if I still have. Oops. I don't have the multi-mount. Uh, maybe I do here. Uh, let's see. There it is. So here's a real quick explanation on the multi-mount. Uh, it's this little sub-plate, sub-mount that we put here. It's a universal standard um, that it lets you go between Nikon, Panavision, EF, Air APL, Sony E, LPL, whatever mount we want, really. Um, so yeah, there's your interchangeable mount for the compact zooms. Um, Whoever was asking about Josh. Josh was asking about that. All right. Um, yeah, that is kind of a bummer that you get cropped for high speed, but I understand it's a concession you have to make. Yeah, it, does, it, it, it pretty much is a C500 Mark II with a smaller sensor. Same point in time and of the exact same image. There is absolutely zero okay. happening with this. So going back to the, the new lens, what they announced, and hence, it's this guy here, the 25 to 250 T2.9 Cine Servo. Now this um, the I'm hoping they get to this soon, otherwise we'll all be sticking around here for a while until they actually start talking about it. Um, super let's see if I can get this over here. When you're in the super 35 millimeter mode, you can get this up to 60 frames per second. So, frames per second. this is, uh, it's the newest addition to their compact, um, sorry, not the compact server. Compact servos are the little tiny ones, the 18 to 80 and the um, 50 to, the dynamic range per second, I forget, 50 to 150, I, I can't remember. Um, this is in line with the 17 to 120 and the 50 to 1000, and this fits perfectly in between um, in my opinion, this is a personal favorite of mine because it goes back to the old Ingenue and Cook days with their 25 to 250 10 times zooms. Um, I'm just going to mute this guy for now. So, oh, they're switching topics. Hold on, let me see if they go back to lens stuff here. Hold on. Thanks, Paul. Up next, from the city of brotherly love, we have Ryan Snyder, professional market specialist for Canon's Imaging Solutions Group, who will introduce an exciting new cinema lens. There we go. I'm going to turn the volume up on these guys. Hi, I'm Ryan Snyder, and I'm very excited to share with you today that we are introducing a new Cine Servo lens. This is the CN 10x25 <laughs> so IAS, 
also known as the Cine Servo 25 to 250. And so, just if so you guys know, if you're familiar with our Cine Servo lenses, longer you probably the already know about the impressive range with unique Ultra Telephoto 50 to 1000. This new model strengthens our lineup as it finds its place in between these two popular lenses. What can you shoot with this thing? Uh-oh. All right, so first off, we've what just happened? So the camera can record cinema raw. Their feed just jumped way back. Cards. And again, this is in any crop mode. So oh, no. crop mode, you're going to be getting 4K cinema That's raw not me. Up That's on them. That's on Canon. <laughs> if I go into the Super 16 millimeter crop mode, oh, then bummer. I can shoot 2K. They were just getting into the good stuff with the zoom. Up to 180 frames a second. In 4K, the cinema raw light comes at a data usage of one gigabit per second. While in the 2K mode, you're looking at 250 megabits uh, per I second. I hope they jump back so there. So quite a savings in data. At frame rates leading up to 30 and including oh, it's jumping 30, all over the place. You're going to be shooting 12 bit depth. But if you exceed 30, then it goes down. All right, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'll keep talking uh, so about So something just to keep in mind when you're playing your projects. Let's take a look at how I really care about. ABC. Except VVC is well, Canon. Let, let them sort out their ABC streaming codec. stuff. Um, so again, here's the 25 to 250. It's just barely bigger than the 17 to 120 uh, with a, a lot more range. Um, so if anybody is coming from the old film days and you used to use the Ingenue 25 to 250 HR or the Cook 25 to 250, um, it's obvious it's a very familiar focal length those were the the workhorses prior to the 24 to 290 optimo um and there's sort of there's still other options out there that have uh, a very similar focal length um you've got you know the fuji 25 to 300 you have the allura 25 to 45 to 250 you have um the Canon 30 to 300, kind of a similar focal range, um, but this is going to be smaller and lighter than all of those. Uh, this is smaller, maybe a little bit lighter than the original, like Ingenue and Cook 25 to 250s. T2.9, um, it's actually 2.9 to 3.5, I think. 2.9 to 3.9. So at the very end of the zoom, you lose a stop there. Um, that's expected on a telephoto zoom like that. Oh. Did I just lose my page? I should definitely change that on the title here. You guys are getting a, a glimpse of the back end of my system here. So if we go back here and refresh, 2.9 to 3.9, there we go. Um, what else? Obviously, because it's a Cine Servo, it has the servo grip that can be controlled externally or on the grip, it has the rocker. Um, yeah, okay, so the 1.5 extender, that's a big deal. The extender is built into the lens. Uh, I don't know if it says it here. I gotta update that features. Mm. They're right there, right at the top. 1.5 extender, so it's built in, which is this giant tumor hanging off the side of the lens. Um, that's a pretty cool feature to have it built in, which means obviously it's optimized for that optical design. Um, you can use a 1.4 or a 1.7 and you'll get pretty good results. But when this has been tailored to this lens, uh, you know that you're maintaining maximum image quality. Um, okay. What else? The price, uh, I probably should have checked before I shared this live. <laughs> Oops, um, if Canon is watching this and I messed up, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but the 25 to 250 will be 29,999. So it's not far off from their other Cine servos. Uh, let me see if I can pull those up. The 17 to 120 is 23,850, which is a little bit cheaper. And then obviously the 50 to 1,000 being such a specialty lens is much more expensive. Uh, okay, they're going back to the, the lens stuff now. So let me pop back and I'll pipe that audio in for you guys and I'll shut up for a minute. Ryan Snyder, 
and I'm very excited to share with you today that we are introducing a new Cine Servo lens. This is the CN 10x25 IAS, also known as the Cine Servo 25 to 250. If you're familiar with our Cine Servo lenses, you probably already know. Introduce, introduce our next oh, segment where we'll we hear about the new stuff? technologies in the world of broadcast television. Introduce our next segment where we'll hear about new technologies in the world of broadcast television. Our next presenter is Jaman Lomax, Canon's national sales manager. TV broadcast and production. I don't know what just happened. And 720. Their when you go feed into is the Super all over 16 the place. Mode, you're going to be getting 2K, full HD, and also 720. Wow. One of the nice things okay. about XFAVC in this camera is that not only do you have the standard bit rates, but they've also included a long dot mode, which greatly increases the amount of space that you can have on the card. And maybe of tantamount importance when talking about XFAVC with this camera is that I'm going to refresh it and see what happens here. Hopefully, I don't regret this. studio and on the streets delivering captivating imagery for some of the most watched moments in our history all right their feet throughout is our going decades in here. the industry we have worked hand in hand with leading broadcasters and broadcast camera manufacturers to develop new products and technologies that advance the art form of imaging when 2020 began canon had the largest lineup of two third inch 14 right, so lenses in the world stuff now. with 17 different options to choose from now we're adding an 18th. So some other answers here. Um, New Back in 2018, <laughs> we introduced the CJ18 by 7.6 might be in as a versatile mid-range uh, option in our UHD yes, GC line of cost-effective 4K have, UHD whoops, portable they lenses. Also have a, um, now we're proud to introduce its younger sibling, convert it. the CJ18 by 7.6 KASE. It features all of the imaging excellence of the original. But with the two time this is all their ENG stuff. Uh, maybe this is interesting to some of you guys, but it doesn't really apply. Nobody's really using ENG for cinema these days. So, um, what are the questions? Um, okay, so AC Casey, are you going to be able to modify it for your PL slash EF adapter? No, I won't. Um, because let's go back to this here. Uh, it's not going to show it because it's a picture of the front of the lens, but um, the twenty, the new twenty-five to two hundred and fifty has obviously when you have, when you buy an EF mount, it has EF protocol, it has all their communication protocol, um, and the PL mount version has Cook slash I data, which is the same concept but for PL mount. Um, and because it has all those electronics, if we install our multi mount. Um, the ergonomics and digital service we won't you, you'll lose those communications similar to Canon's current lineup of portable zoom lenses providing users with maximum mobility in a variety of shooting situations when combined with the rest of our UHD GC and UHD yeah it's really light lenses, it's a, it's we now for that focal length and that range and that speed it's actually really light HD all things considered all do you have an ETA when you'll be reviewing one so a bit of, a bit more behind the scenes we were supposed to have this lens for review um, right when the whole covid lockdown thing happened especially here in california when um, businesses were sort of told to close uh, because of that whole situation we didn't get a review unit um but i imagine when this is all over they'll obviously be sending us one we always review canon stuff we always talk about canon stuff so um, really, it's kind of based on when the uh, the lockdown is lifted. It's no wonder why we've been the brand of choice. Not having the same issues on my end in Chicago. Watching both streams. Okay, so maybe my connection's wonky here, but I've, I'm I'm giving you guys the lowdown on the on the lens anyway. This is the one that interests me. This is the announcement that I was waiting for. Um, I was hoping they would get to this right away. information with you all about Canon's new advanced broadcast. Oh, Larry Thorpe. At the same time, if anybody doesn't know Larry, he's a genius. Um, he's a, an inspiration to me early on. Okay, so he's really just talking about lens controllers. Control system, and shown here is the focus demand control which is odd. I don't know why they would have Larry Thorpe going into cables and servos. 
Uh, he's a, a an optics guy. One can see an immediate difference with the standard controller. Oh well. Um. In the form of a built-in electronic display. Equally, the Too bad nobody can can light a talking. I know, right? You always think. You have, like, every piece of equipment at your disposal, and the quality of some of this stuff is just mind-boggling. I mean, I'm not bragging here. I just have two light or two uh, uh, windows on either side of me, so it's convenient, but... <laughs> here we show the physical challenge that confronts the camera operator, namely the height and sensitivity. Oh, you want, let, let me pipe this back in. Sorry, I don't know why I have this loading here. I'm gonna pipe this back in for you guys. Hang on. 4K UHD, only a small movement of that this knob is relevant makes a significant stuff. change in focus. This shows the technical details of the new focus demand controller. Note the buttons and switches that are not on the standard controller. They facilitate the presetting of a number of operational modes, each one specifically tailored to a unique shooting environment. To illustrate the amazing new enhancements to operational flexibilities afforded by the new focus demand, we'll briefly examine three modes selected from the total available. Fine Focus Mode 1 is tailored to the quite special shooting environments of broadcast television coverage of live stage shows, a major element within outside broadcasts around the world. Typically, the lens is at the back of the opera house, theater, or auditorium, and the camera operator finds the central focus point for the on-stage talent. During rehearsal, the range of required focus changes is established, and now the focus demand is preset to provide that restricted optical focus range, but with a wide knob rotation range. This facilitates very precise focusing on the chosen subject. Here you see the diagrammatic representation of fine focus mode one setting, and on the right is shown the representation as it appears in the focus demand display. This picture illustrates a live opera scene being televised with the camera operator using the fine focus mode one to achieve a beautifully smooth and high precision focus on a facial close-up, very common in operatic broadcasts. In live television coverage of theatrical stage dramas, the need for facial close-ups is also common. Finally, this fine focus mode allows very smooth and precise live rack focusing between different talent on a stage. Our second operational mode that can be preset is focus range limit. Here the desire is to be able to refocus subjects whose movements are limited. Here the camera operator prefers to achieve these adjustments with a limited amount of focus knob rotation. Showing the diagrammatic representation of limitations to both the focus range and the knob control range around the chosen central focus. Illustrating the limited knob rotation to refocus on different subjects. The third mode is termed control range limit and it's the virtual opposite of the fine focus mode one. Here the camera operator seeks a wide range of optical focus control, but implemented with a small range of focus knob control. The diagram illustrates this and the associated display portrayal is shown. Illustrating the normal action of the focus knob, showing the achievement of a substantial readjustment of focus, but achieved with a curtailed range of focus knob rotation. Now we turn to the new zoom controller. Like the focus demand, this zoom demand has buttons and switches that allow a wide variety of operational controls to be preset. This new zoom demand retains all the traditional programmable functions that have been in zoom controllers for many years, but it has some interesting additions. The built-in display greatly facilitates the many presetting options. The display supports easy selection of the desired zoom control curve, it also facilitates the reversal of the thumb control rocker to cater to the preference of different camera operators. Up next, we have Nate McFarlane, a senior specialist in our Quality Assurance and Control Division, who will walk Ooh, us through the latest control. developments for Canon's line of 4K reference displays. Oh, they're getting into displays now. I'm not... Hi, my name is Nate McFarlane, senior quality engineer for Canon USA. 
Today, I'm pleased to announce exciting new feature and firmware upgrades coming to our DPV lineup of professional HDR reference displays. All right, now they're going into our firmware updates. Our frequent product updates. updates strive to continually push... This is definitely the stuff they were going to have announced at NAB and hand out flyers and pamphlets and all that. Um, and maybe it's of interest to you guys, but not so much here. Um, let's get back to the... Cine Servo, because again, that's what I'm here for. That's what interests me the most. Um, what else about this lens? So, like I was saying, you can, it will be available in PL or EF mount, uh, and there's a Servo sort of one time. Uh, actually, I don't know the process. I don't, it's not one time. I think you have to pay a little more for the first time, and then it's a fee thereafter. Um, but you will be able to swap them out at a Canon facility. So like Canon Burbank, once they reopen, um, you'll be able to bring this lens to them, and they'll perform the mount swap going back and forth between PL and EF. Um, see some other questions. We're offering an additional paid license upgrade for both our 1710 and 1711 displays. Oh, I also need to change this. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. This is what happens when I try to live stream something as it's being announced and updating um, all the back end stuff here. Uh, shoot. Pre order. Black level upgrade completely overhaul the image quality performance. Let me see if that works here, which will now boast an impressive one million to one full screen. Content. Nope, that didn't work. Now, let's switch gears to <laughs> uh, free hmm. look up tables or LUTs mm -hmm -hmm. a huge role in performing. Color um, I don't have a firm ship date for the lens yet. The oh, it did work. It just didn't refresh here. There we go. Deposit. All right, so now it's pre order. Users can now import 1D um, so there is no firm chip date on the 25-250 Cine Servo yet. Uh, let me get rid of this other tag. Uh, I suspect, based on Canon's history and how they normally do this, they announce it at NAB. Um, I expect this lens will probably be shipping in summer, maybe into fall. Um, but considering this is part of their like ENG Cine crossover, and it has that that DNA, that legacy from the ENG side, um, this won't be a difficult lens for them to ramp up and produce. It's not something unique like the Sumire's, where they have this new concept and they're trying to figure out how to make it and sell it and everything. Oh, let's Furthermore, refresh that. You built in LUTs that will convert video signals taken from a red digital. All right, pre order. Now it says deposit 29. Uh, what would you guys pay as a deposit for this lens? If you were going to order, if anybody's watching, when you would order this, what would you expect to pay to hold this lens in your name? Give me some feedback there. Normally we do like a thousand or 10% of the, the list price. Which will allow for easy signal and power. I wish they would make these more affordable. That's that's a really vague statement. Um, this is pretty affordable for what you're getting. Uh, really, if you compare this to the other lenses with this focal length, um, it's 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 competitive to say the least. Once again, we welcome back Ryan Snyder, who will now introduce the latest firmware developments for Canon's professional video and Cinema EOS cameras. All right, so now they're getting into... Um, Hi, Ryan Snyder here again. And now on to what you've been waiting for, camera firmware updates. They're getting into firmware for the, the, the Cinema EOS, EOS stuff. ...features to extend the functionality of the cameras and are based on feedback from the field. Let's begin with the XF705. Currently, if you want to record in 4K resolution, you must use the H265 XFATBC codec. While that codec is extremely efficient, providing 10-bit 422-4K and manageable file sizes, it does require some major horsepower in an editing system. Okay. Sorry. Everyone's freaking out now. This is a, this is actually a pretty popular product. Um, 10%, Gary. All right. Um, ACKC, yes, I believe it does 
use the same cables as the 17 to 120. So if you have all that stuff for a 17 to 120, if you have controllers, if you have um, uh, cables, all that, it should work seamlessly with the 25 to 250 Cine servo. There shouldn't be any issues there. Let's give this a deposit price of 1,000. Along with the XF705, we're adding the capability for the C500 Mark II and C200 and 200B to be pulled out 60P or 60 Sorry, you guys are getting the behind the scenes <laughs> look at how we price this stuff. The deposits are just that. It's really just a placeholder to say, yes, I'm serious. I want this lens. Um, if we didn't have deposits, then everyone would click the, re the pre order button and we would say hey canon we need 50 of these and then canon would say okay here's 50 and then everyone would disappear so we have to have something there to to make sure that people are serious um every almost every dealer does the same thing i'll give you guys some more audio here on the the firmware we'll updates be able to record proxy files while shooting in xf avc mode and have the choice of applying a rec 709 lut Ooh. This will provide an offline editing solution for XFAVC in addition to Cinema Raw Light. There's a new menu option, which allows the file names to be identical when recording in double slot mode. The real number and random ID assigned to the file will now match exactly between the two cards, making life easier for production shooting double slot for backup purposes. XFABC long gop support will be added, allowing for smaller file sizes in both 4K and HD. Interlaced HD and 720 options will be included as well. Finally, the following cameras will be adding support for our new Cine Servo 25 to 250 lens. The C200 and 200B, C300 Mark II, C500 Mark II, and all C700 models. Chromatic aberration and peripheral illumination correction, as well as dual pixel CMOS autofocus will okay, be Okay, that's kind of... So it's nice, but a little expected. It. A lot of firmware updates coming to enhance these already great cameras. So what he just said was they're going to do... Um, Thanks so much for your attention. I'm going to turn it I down. wish you well. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you back in the field. So that little tidbit he just said about firmware for the C300, 500, now 700. it's my privilege um, to welcome Larry Thorpe, Senior Fellow of Canon's Information Technologies and Communications Group. Hold on, let's see what overview of they're going to say from Larry Thorpe. Data technology. And a little later in the segment, he'll be joined by Mike Davis, Senior Vice President of Field and Technical Operations for Fox I love Sports. Canon titles. And if anyone's ever gotten a business group. card from a Canon person, the titles are Hello, like everybody. Larry Thorpe three lines again. long. And switching gears to speak about an emerging area that may be new to many of you, volumetric video where we will share with you Canon's progress in this exciting field. In simple terms volumetric video is the process of capturing moving images of the real world encompassing people and objects that can be used as information to create free viewpoint video. A naturally moving dynamic 3D model reproduction from any angle at any moment in time. They are a form of avatars but reproduced with very high visual fidelity. These models can be observed from arbitrary viewpoints in a virtual or augmented reality scene. Let's start by taking a look at the principles of volumetric video capturing in the context of sports. First, a large number of cameras are placed around the stadium or arena. Okay, and I don't know that this is, capture is super relevant here. Next, Silhouettes of objects such as um, so what I was saying about the firmware part from the images captured by each camera. Um, what so Canon's doing is it's extremely common in um, photo lenses and cameras, especially within a system. Um, so when you use the 25 to 250, the new 25 to 250 Cine Servo on any of those cameras they listed, C300, C500, C700, um, Mark II, and so on accordingly. Uh, it will compensate for chromatic aberration and uh, field illumination, so vignetting or focus or uh, illumination fall off. So what that means is you will get a slight advantage if you use this lens on a Canon on a supported Canon camera. Um, you will have higher image quality technically um, as a result. 
Now, that said, it's not anything you couldn't also do with some pretty basic software uh, in post. There's really no difference. You're just removing aberrations on the back end. So it's nice that it's seamless when you're using a Canon camera, but certainly not necessary. Sorry if I was double talking there. I know it's kind of hard to hear. Um, C300 Mark II body. Gary, that's, I didn't see the price. That's fascinating. 10K. Um, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's a, a very competent camera for 10K. His beard? Who, Larry's beard? Oh, I think my uh, my video feed just died here. My personal one. Let me switch that off. Um, get it back up and running. I actually broke the battery door on my camera this morning, so I think maybe <laughs> that might have something to do with it. But I'm glad you guys still have my terrible audio. see here this might have charged up by now i hope get that going there we go sorry for all the rustling Oh yeah, I totally snapped that door off. Oh, my focus. Oh. Hold on, let me crank this for five minutes because it's not manual it's fly by wire okay eh. there's larry system could you tell us what you saw there what you thought I of was it. lucky enough to go to Yokohama and meet with oh no it's <laughs> a zoom background uh, very interested in, in seeing the free viewpoint system up to that point we'd seen a lot of demonstrations and I was extremely uh, uh, inspired by what what I saw um, certainly a large array a large setup but the result ended up being um, what I thought was kind of the promise of volumetric capture. Um, we've been thinking about volumetric capture for a while, but uh, what I saw was volumetric capture in action. And by that, I mean... I do appreciate that he picked a that can studio virtual background and not like the beach on the or whatever that's play worth. To get any angle at any time. And what was amazing... All right, this isn't so interesting either. It, so let me drop him down. Um, so yeah, the price drops are fascinating. I gotta, I gotta get more info, uh, but that's a huge price reduction on the compact zooms. Let's pull those back up here. So the compact zooms, again, if you guys are, are joining recently, um, 15 and a half to 47 and the 30 to 105, both got a price drop almost in half. Um, you had other deals before. They had rebates. They had um, they had the financing, which I'm sure they'll still have. But with this price drop, that's fantastic. What was this before? It was 23. Somebody posted it in the in the chat. Uh, where was that? That was way up. Jeez.
23275. Let's let's figure that. Uh 15 to 47. Sort that one out first because it's wider. And I already forgot what I said. 23275. Okay. The, the volumetric stuff that they're talking about is pretty fascinating, but um, I don't know that it's what CineLens and Duclos audience are here for, so I'm not piping that in yet. Um, let's see. And then the 30 to 105. Let's update that guy. These are the worst earbuds I own. I had headphones on when I was setting everything up, but they were big and bulky, and I didn't want to look like a gamer streaming. So I switched to the earbuds, which I'm kind of regretting. Okay. All right, so that's the 30 to 105. Um, let me refresh that here so you guys can see it. The The other Zooms did not receive a price reduction, which is fine. It's it's interesting that they didn't do that. The bigger ones, the 14 and uh, 14.5 to 60 and the 30 to 300, um, those are still pricey. Um, I kind of wish they had done a similar price reduction, and who knows, maybe they will if they see that this works well for the compact zooms. Um, but as of now, those remain the same price, which is uh, 30 or 40. I'll pull that up here. Let's go back to Canon. So the big ones, yeah, 42, 750, and 44, those are still pricey to say the least. So, but these two um, compact zooms, yeah, so was 23275. That looks correct now. Um, so that's a fan, uh, it's a fantastic price for these. Um, it puts them in the same range as something like a Zeiss 21 to 100, um, the Fuji 20 to 120. Um, they really are making these extremely competitive. <clears throat> okay. My Canon rep. I just saw their text at, that the, uh, the thing started. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, the, the the compact zooms, I call them compact zooms just because there's no real way to describe them other than that. Um, I know that Zeiss has the actual product name compact zooms. So sorry if that's confusing. Blame that on Canon for not naming their product. I guess technically these are considered CNE zooms, but that's still so vague. Okay. And then let's, what was the other, whoops. So that, that rounds out the Cine Servo line really well. Some people had complained that the, the 17 to 120 was a little wide and they wanted something just a little bit longer, but they didn't want to go as long as the 50 to 1000, which is a specialty zoom, definitely. It's big, it's heavy, it's expensive. Um, not everyone needs a thousand millimeters. So I'm glad that this lens exists now. Um, comparison wise, like I was saying, 
um, let's see, the, the, the easiest lens I would compare it to would be the Ingenue 25 to 250. Oh, that's a style zoom, I think. Yeah, so there's the 25 to 250. So for example, 33,000, um, I think that's about the same price. The weight on this guy is 15, so almost 16 pounds. Oh, sorry. It's my auto reminder. So, sorry, that's the length. 16 pounds for this zoom, 25 to 250. And it's a little bit slower, it's a T3.5. Uh, and the Canon, oh geez. Same focal length, slightly faster, and 6.4 pounds. That's 10 pounds lighter. That's phenomenal. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the 17 to 120. Still, 6.7. So almost the same weight. Uh, almost 10 pounds lighter. Uh, let's see what they're talking about now. Oh, the R5. An interesting year. Second generation camera, the EOS 5D Mark II, revolutionized the moving picture industry. Allowing I will agree with that entirely. That was a revolutionary with a relatively small camera body with a 24 by 36 budget friendly motion sensor, picture. A format that was larger than the existing Super 35 millimeter format that they were used to. This full frame camera set forth a new trend in motion picture capture, allowing for very low light performance, shallow depth of field, and use of lenses not generally accessible to everyday filmmaker. This small little camera priced below $4,000 would set a new direction for Canon. Setting the DSLR movie making world on fire and bringing high quality filmmaking, not to just major motion picture budgets, but to the indie filmmaker, documentaries, as well as web-based content and journalism. Now flash forward to 2011 and introduction of Cinema EOS with a Canon C300, a dedicated motion picture camera for the movie professionals. But it was not just a camera. All right, so camera. he's just this talking about the new R5 stuff. And uh, I'm going to drop him down. Um, so to answer some other questions, um, Josh Kirk would ask about 21, 21 to 100 versus 30 to 105. That's a tough one. Um, the Zeiss is a little bit lighter. I assume you're talking about the Zeiss 21 to 100. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, it does lose one stop over the whole range of the zoom. It's not like most lenses where the ramping is just in that last 10 to 20% of the zoom. It's consistent across the whole range, which is, it's it's arguably good or bad, depending on your, your outlook. Um, but in terms of image quality, you're not going to see a dramatic difference between the two, between the, the Zeiss and the Canon. Uh, I guess it really comes down to what you need in a zoom. The 21 to 100 is a little bit more ENG style just because it's a little lighter. Uh, and this, the uh, 30 to 105 is a little more traditional cine. But uh, really, those are going to be extremely competitive with this price reduction from Canon. B&H already has a 1K discount on the lens and camera package. Well, I don't sell cameras. So, good for them. Zeiss. So Benjamin says the Zeiss 21 on here ramps, but Zeiss states that on the lens, and it isn't much of an issue in real world use. I agree, when it's gradual across the zoom range, it's not that big of a deal, unless you're doing VFX stuff and you need that consistency. The Canon does ramp too, but it's not marked and it's extremely minimal. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of increased vignetting. Oh, the R5 8K, I think... I need to look into this more. I don't know if that's 8K on the full sensor or if it's cropped. 8K video capture, non-cropped, perfect. Thank you for answering my question, Canon Live Video Guy. Uh, 
Safe to assume the CNE zooms match the scene. Yes, um, for the most part, yeah. So the question was, did the CNE zooms match the primes? Um, obviously, they're based on the same DNA. They come from the same... They're, they're both made by Canon. The primes are loosely based on their L-glass. Some of them, not all of them. But that said, Canon, love them or hate them, they really did a good job getting that color science accurate. Oh my gosh, my video died again. I'm just gonna... I didn't even realize that. The battery on this camera... So I have to run this camera off of battery. Let's just move this down here. <laughs> um, yeah, when I'm doing this live stuff, I have to rely on the battery, the camera battery, because uh, the USB-C video out um, takes up the power port. I should just get a, a dummy battery, but whatever. I don't plan on making a career of live streaming press conferences. Jeff Q. Oh, hey, Jeff. Yeah, cutting between the Zeiss um, is, is an easy no-brainer. The ZE's, albeit slightly older glass, uh, but they'll pair up with that 20 to 100, 21 to 100, no problem. Hey, Curtis. Good to see you here. Um, the 10-bit color, I don't know if you're talking about the R5 or the Cinema EOS stuff. Thank you all for so much in touch. We hope you found this information about what's to come useful and exciting. Please revisit this webpage, www.ufa.canon.com slash VPC2020 in the coming days for this video, as well as additional resources and materials about our new announcements and instructions. Thank you again for joining us. Stay well. Thanks, lady. Okay, so that that was um, pretty much what I was expecting in terms of cameras and lenses. Let me bring the site back here. Um, I don't have much use for the, the Canon thing anymore. Oh no, my aspect. Let's fix that. Bingo. So the 25 to 250, just to recap, um, the price is not 1,000, that's the deposit. Oops. The list price is 29,999. So it's about 30,000. Um, which puts it in the same price range as a lot of the other high-end cine zooms. Uh, is the CNE 20 million readily in stock? I believe it is. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, in EF mount, I don't know that I have any at the moment. Definitely drop me an email, and I'll let you know there, uh, cine chimp. Uh, so yeah, the other lenses that this competes with, like I was saying before, the 25 to 300 Fujinon, the Ingenue 25 to 250. Um, I looked at the Ingenue, and then the Fujinon we didn't pull up yet. That would be under Cabrio. There we go. So the Fujinon is quite a bit more expensive. Go back to the Canon. Whoops, I didn't mean to go all the way home here. There we go. So the 17 to 120 is 23,000. It doesn't show it, just shows the deposit price because um, we got in trouble for it saying 1,000 was the list price, even though it's not. Um, the list price 29,999. That's extremely competitive for that focal length and that range, especially with that size and weight. So that's the lens I was waiting for them to announce. You can pre-order it. 
right now. Um, just go to actually. Let's get a short link here. What do you guys want the short link to be? Drop me some some comments here. Let's grab this link. Whoops. I messed it up. Let's do uh do close.tv slash CNE 10x. Well, it's not a CNE, it's a CNE service host. CNE servo 10x. All right. Let's see if that works now. <laughs> it does. All right. So let me grab that. And I'll drop that in the chat here. There's the link to the new lens. Um, yes, that was it for their virtual press conference. They announced the a bunch of new things, you know, firmware updates and whatnot, um, to monitors, to cameras. The primary things that we were interested in was this new lens, the 25 to 250. And they didn't talk about it in the press conference, but the price drop on the compact zooms was probably the best new announcement, <laughs> even though it was a non-announcement. Um, again, I'll jump back to those. I think that's what a lot of people are going to be excited about. Whoops, wrong one. So this, the 30 to 105, is probably the more popular of the two. I'm not sure why. Um, I think it's just a slightly slightly more usable zoom range. Um, but, you know, if you're worried about your crop factor, then, yeah, the 15 and a half to 47 is fantastic if you're trying to get back to that full frame field of view. So these two lenses at that price is phenomenal. I mean, that's that's almost less than what you could find these used for. And to have that price for a brand new Super 35 zoom with Canon's name behind it is pretty fantastic. Matt, with the red Komodo and R5 at the same mount, what would you could what would be a good call? Um <laughs> that's a, a great question, Curtis. So at the moment, nothing. Um, I'm working on a couple different options. Personally, I think the best match would be something like the Fuji MK zooms, which I will have some news about in the very near future um, in regards to the mounts that those are available in. Uh, I think the size and weight lends itself perfectly to the Komodo. So keep an eye out for that very soon so yeah we'll wrap it up there actually i'll drop a link here let me just put the link for all of the canon stuff there you guys go that didn't work okay so there's all the canon stuff browse as you wish um that about wraps it up if you guys um, want to see more of these or want to want me to keep doing these, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more press conferences or at least online announcements because of NAB, NAB being canceled. Um, so we'll keep doing these and I'll keep sharing new lens stuff as I'm allowed to. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.